Hello and welcome to the second part of our note in which I am discussing with my guest Andrew Smithers uh, the very important topic of can we tell whether uh, markets are over or undervalued. We've trashed various measures by which people try to measure this. Now let's try to talk about what actually works. So once again I'd like to greet Andrew Smithers. Thank you very much for joining me again. Mm -hmm. Now, let's start by taking a look at uh, the long-term behavior of markets. Over the very long term, this is the S&P on a log scale, you, you, we can you, see there's plainly, a, uh, there's plainly some kind of a trend there. Yeah. Many people will say that uh, really you just need to look at price over the long term and that will give you a good gauge of whether markets are over or undervalued. Is that a fair way of coming at the problem? No, I think not. Uh, if you look at this chart, for example, you can see that the market appeared to have moved sideways from 1900 to 1940. Right. And then upwards. And if you'd actually taken longer term data, and we got mm. some quite reasonable data going back now to 1801. Right. You will see that in the long term period, the market really didn't move in real terms at all. Uh, all the income, all the return you got out of it was from dividends. Right. And that was worked very well, actually. You've got a 6% dividend yield uh, in real terms, and markets in the long run appear to give you a 6% return. Okay, so there is more to valuing markets than just fluctuations. Well, as I think this, this chart shows that if you simply use the nominal value of the index, mm. you're going to be very confused. Okay, now let's take a look. You made an attempt uh, to... Uh, uh, try to capture how a long-term trend might be used to, uh, to compare to, to valuation. Take me through. Th this pseudo indicator, as I understand it, is in some ways a measure of uh, the price trend. Indeed it is. Um, Stephen Wright and Donald Robertson mm. have produced an extremely learned right. paper on this subject for those of, of, of our listeners mm. who, who are... Uh, who love mathematical equations, they should certainly look it up. Right. But basically what... For us, it, we'll just look at the two lines. Exactly. Yes. Right, yes. Basically what it says is it isn't quite using the same data in an important way than mm. the one you were showing in the chart before. Mm. This is about long-term real returns. Right. And it has, therefore, the dividends reinvested and it's mm. adjusted for changes in inflation. Okay. And having done that, there is this long-term return which seems to be fairly stable. Right. And therefore, the, the recent returns do give you some indication, or should mathematically, of whether the market is high or low. Okay, so this isn't a great fit with w final outcomes, but it, there, are, there, have, there are many worse. This is a, uh, there this are is many an worse. This is a quite a reasonable approach. It's very complex mathematically, but it's quite a good approach. Uh, it has problems in theory. Okay. Um, now let's take a look that. at perhaps one of the measures that uh, has been most talked about recently, which really does seem to work quite well, which is uh, CAPE, the cyclically adjusted price earnings ratio, perhaps most associated in people's minds with uh, Robert Schiller of Yale. Right. Take me through what's happening here. Well, on the whole, the cyclically adjusted PE is a, a nice straightforward way of avoiding looking at this year's earnings or the unknown next year's earnings. Okay, because people understand that earnings are cyclical and take account uh, right. of that. Yeah. And so they've averaged them. Right. And uh, you can average them over a number of different periods. And Ed Tower, who's uh, got a, uh, he's now retired, but he has a chair at Duke University, mm. has shown that actually you do better using longer term averages than shorter. So what I did in this chart was mm. use the 30 year geometric mean, which is technically a sounder method than the arithmetic, and compared it to hindsight value. And what we see is that it's almost always in the right direction, but probably doesn't alert you to, to quite what it, a screaming it, buy it, the, mar the market has been on various there, occasions. There have been times when uh, the cyclical adjustment didn't seem to capture mm. quite what was going on enough. Right. And you can, and obviously, uh, in, in the run-up and the f first years of the First World War was yes. a very good example. Uh, hindsight value shows the market was very expensive and these indicators, uh, the 10-year average was particularly bad. The 30-year geometric wasn't nearly so bad. Okay, now let's get to Tobin's Q, 
This is uh, associated with another Nobel Prize winning Yale economist named Tobin, uh, which r r compares the, uh, the uh, value of the stock market to the underlying replacement value of, uh, of its assets. This appears to be really rather a good fit. Would you agree with that? And why do you think it works as an indicator? Well, um, there are two ways that you can value equities in theory. Mm. And a good model will obviously cover both. Right. One of these is to treat them equities as financial assets, which is the way they're normally taught in business schools. Right. And so you have to work out what the correct discount is and what the future returns will be and come right. out to an answer. And CAPE More or less is, does that. Does that. It does that. It's actually what it's trying to do. Another way is to treat equities as titles to the ownership of real assets. Right. And say sort that of a in Ben a, Graham type of approach of yeah. Yeah, and say that assets. if the data are good and you've got uh, a reasonably competitive economy, hmm. then the cost of anything is what the cost it, it is to produce. But of course, it takes rather longer to produce companies than it takes to grow tomatoes. Right. So you won't affect it coming back quite as quickly to its average as you do. Right. But this is what this does. Now, in the case of Q, um, I suppose there's two questions I want to, to ask you. The first is that it's, as I understand it, showing that the market is very expensive at the moment. And the second is that perhaps because of that, it's being very strongly uh, criticized by many people in the investment banking community, saying that the, the whole concept of the underlying assets needs to be revised in, the, in an era where software and so on are, are so important. Yeah. Is Q still a reliable indicator, and is it telling us that the market is a sell? Well, certainly the market is telling you that both Q and CAPE tell you exactly the same thing. Right. Both these two indicators point to the market being around 70% overpriced. 7-0. Yeah. And now that's nothing like as awful as it was in the peaks of 29 and 1999 and 2000. Right. Uh, well, so the market, nothing stopped the market on history going up further. But they are expensive, and they're expensive at levels which in the past have been quite dangerous. 1906, 1937, 1968 uh, were all uh, similar peaks, and, and the economy and the stock market didn't do very well afterwards. Now, can we use these measures of value to help us time the market? Is this in any way telling us that the market is about to... to no. Uh, no valid metric is going to give you timing. If you could use valid metrics of value to time the market, then the market would never become misvalued. Even, fina even financial journalists, <laughs> sto sto yes. uh, if fund managers, and perhaps even central banks would notice. And the market would never get misvalued. So it has to be quite long and variable degrees to which you can get away from uh, value for their value not to be always at market price. OK, Andrew, thank you very much indeed. This is a longer discussion than we sometimes have. I hope it was useful. The final analysis, it really is difficult to deny that markets are very expensive at the moment. If you want an indicator that will tell you whether that really means that we can time it, that it's about to crash, no such indicator exists. But it would be wise to be cautious because the markets really do look at the moment as though they're too expensive.